have some beer bongs because you're listening to the Drunken and Graveyard podcast. And my name is Robin. And I'm Scott. And tonight we're going to do a kaiju monster based podcast. So much kaiju. So much kaiju. I don't have any like cool cryptids to talk about this week, but we are going to be talking about a Shutter exclusive release. It just came out on June 6th on the Shutter platform, and it is universal to uh, US Shutter, Canada Shutter, and Shutter UK. And it is 2017 Australian horror film entitled Boar, directed by Chris Sun, starring Bill Mosley in a very strange role, and a giant uh, pig. A big, giant, really angry version of Pumbaa from The Lion King. Yeah, it's like, he didn't get his coffee. He's like a warthog that's pissed off. And of course, we're also going to be talking about Godzilla, King of the Monsters. That one just came out as well. We're a little late to the party line on it came out on may 31st i think yeah it was like last week over a little over a week question mark and that one was like the direct sequel to godzilla 2014 which we'll get into that so we're going we've got some like monsters for you we don't have a ton of news this week so we got a couple pieces so it might uh end up being a little bit of a shorter episode we're a little bit behind uh which is kind of like standard for us weirdly like Mm. I don't know. It's uh, life. Life's been wild. We're getting prepared to go to the Calgary Horror Convention next week. So we'll have coverage from the Horror Convention and some pictures and all of those good things as well coming down the pipe. So that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, let's take it away and get started talking about Boar. So again, directed by Chris Sun. And uh, what the fuck else has he directed? What's his deal all about? Um, I'm always interested in like films, like Australian horror films, because there was that one that uh, I think, um, fuck, what was it called? Like Wolf Creek? Yes. I remember seeing it in the theater and it was just myself and a friend and we sat down and then the strange guy came and sat down immediately right beside us, pulled out a cheeseburger. Who does that? I mean, the cheeseburger is fine. The cheeseburger is fine. Like the happy meal is fine. I'll accept that. It's sitting right beside someone. Yeah. That was like a psycho move. And then when it, when the credits came up. Uh, to open the movie, it said like made in Australia, and he just got up and left. Yeah, maybe maybe he had a bad experience. Maybe he ate some like a Vegemite sandwich, oh, like that song. That, that qualifies as a bad experience. Yeah. So Chris Sun has directed Charlie's Farm, Daddy's Little Girl, and Come and Get Me. All horrifying <clears throat> Australian movies I... about how horrifying Australia is, because Boar continues that tradition. I'm not sure. So Come and Get Me is a 2011 film. And it's weird because I'm currently in the process of uh, cataloging all of our DVDs and VHS tapes and our laser discs because we're still in the laser disc age in this house. Um, And I actually just ran across a DVD copy of Come and Get Me. And I was just like, yeah. And I was like this. I, I was so struck by the I didn't like the cadence of the title. And I was like, come and get me. So now I have to go and try and find that, and then we'll have to watch it and yeah. see. But you have to go and get it. Oh fuck! It's just—it's a question. It's asking you. It's a request. Yeah. After being at like twenty four hundred movies, finishing out this afternoon, and I was like staring down like another maybe six hundred, and I'm like, Ugh, I like, I'm kind of good with. <laughs> This task, terrible task. Yeah, but in it's the, almost done. In the last couple of weeks, I've ca- uh, cataloged all of our records, and and that was like, record nerds are like the worst nerds, I think. Speaking from self reflection. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, going through the films has been like, just because I keep picking up like weird, super dirty old sun bleached like Ugh. VHS tapes, yeah. and then they have like these really graphic covers on them, and I was like, you know. I don't know if I've seen this. Like, I found one, and I was looking it up online. I can't find any information about it, and it's just called Blood. Solid. That'll that's an easy Google search. That yeah. will bring up a thousand movies. Yeah, and I was like, okay. You know and that then, one, like, Blood. Yeah, Rogers Video. Like, it's a cut case, but not only did they cut the case, they just cut the cover off of it, and then just glued the cover onto a Rogers Video cover. And then cut the description Ugh. out. There's no date, runtime, fuck all. Love it. And I was like, okay. And so I'm, tr- I'm looking it up in like this, in this movie app called CLZ Movies. 
and uh it's attached to like imdb and i was like like of course nothing's coming out because there's f- how how many million movies that have blood in the title yeah yeah like just maybe it's a maybe it's an adaptation of that doom clone from the 90s blood yeah. I don't fucking that'd be great actually but it's not because i don't think that exists all right so back on track for boar so it was a 2017 film and there's not like a ton online as far as like plot synopses or whatever. I did see a, uh, like horror Twitter was really popping off and blowing up about it. And it's, it is starring Bill Mosley, but maybe like because I've only seen Bill Mosley as like Chop Top and seen him as Otis Driftwood in the Rob Zombie films, that I'm expecting him to be like crazy and unhinged. Yeah, and, a total like, fucking psycho. Yeah, a lunatic that's like raving and screaming, lick my plate, or like, I'm the devil and I'm here to do the devil's work. So to see him playing like a father, like a mild mannered dad, it's disconcerting. It was like, I was uncomfortable yeah. the whole time because I kept waiting for him to like rip off his hair and start <laughs> screaming <laughs> like i don't, I don't rip know his hair off. he had very fine dad hair and it was like it looked like it would be so like baby soft yeah oh yeah and he looked like he smelled like head and shoulders like he had like a braided belt on well, what do you think he's doing he in his spare time keeping his jeans high and tight i don't know he calls himself chop top mosley like i thought he would be like a little edgier not like this like like, oh, it's so nice of you that you're dating my daughter. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was creepy. And I think that was scarier than the fucking boar. Yeah. The boar was pretty great, though. The boar was great because it was just angry. And they never really explained it too much. Like, they didn't go into, like, this is the boar's tragic backstory. It was raised on the streets of Peru. <laughs> It got into gangs and it started eating cocaine. And then it got thrown out of the gangs and it's being hunted by the cartels. I'd watch that movie, too. That sounds like sequel material. <laughs> With Danny Trejo starring. Yeah. Boar um, 2, Back to the Streets. Yeah, yeah. Like, the boar's, like, tragic backstory. Like, it got kicked out of a couple rescues. Oh, yeah. For, its like, mom died because she was a... A boar prostitute. Yeah, boar sex worker. And she died young. And he got raised in the system and kicked to the street yeah, when he was 18. Yeah, he went to, went to a couple rescues, but he wasn't cute. Because part he had, like, one white eye, kind of. And was, like, all bristly all looking. milky eye. Yeah, and he got to see all the other cute pigs get adopted by, like, white ladies. Until they're like, I have a pig. Which is the new, like, white lady abortion that I have to see on Instagram. It is, though. What's up with that? I, I mean, know. apparently they're nice. And I don't, they're cute. But I wouldn't want one yeah i i mean whatever I'm, you maybe do maybe i'm being piggest yeah you do whatever you want to do i don't really give a fuck no that's but fine. it's like it's this new thing where it's like it seems like everyone i know is like getting pigs or like hey look at this cute pig and it's like okay so he got kicked out of a bunch of rescues like he's like angry he's if he's looking for love in all the wrong places and he just comes out of nowhere like it's like a group of kids are out like camping in the australian wilderness which why would you do that it seems like everything out there wants to hurt you or could kill you. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I like part of me wants to go to Australia to go to Australia. But the other part of me is like, you'll die there. Like, I almost can't survive the summer here. Yeah, yeah. In Canada. And we get like eight weeks of it. Yeah, I read a blog post from like or an interview with George R. R. Martin where he was saying that he based like uh, two of his like islands uh, in Game of Thrones off of Australia, and he filled it with, like, things that will kill you. <laughs> I was gonna say, are they hellscapes? Yeah, the Basilisk Isles is full of, like, terrible beasts that will kill you, and then if the beasts don't get you and kill you, then it's filled with disease. Oh, good. And, uh, the island of Nath that Miss Sunday was from in Game of Thrones has, a like, a disease that's carried by butterflies, and it kills anyone who isn't a native of Nath. That's just not fair. Which makes even less sense when the Unsullied sail there and are like, okay, bye. But, oh, that's the TV show. Yeah, fuck the TV show. Um, Yeah, so the Australian wilderness, I don't know what's going on out there. There's drop bears, there's like kangaroos, there's dingoes that actually know, legitimately though. steal people's babies. But I mean, maybe, maybe it's not as bad as it seems. It can't be. People live there. People live there, right? There's people that think that Australia doesn't exist, though. Are that's a conspiracy. The same people? That can be the conspiracy from this movie and then godzilla king of the monsters also has another conspiracy i yeah we'll get to that but i almost shit my pants <laughs> i like grab you and josh at that point but we'll get to that 
Let's get a mo. Let's get on board. Let's get some fucking. So it, action. it opens like your standard like monster movie, but the Australian locals i could not understand what they were saying no the you, first few like 15 minutes i was like we're gonna have to turn on subtitles here because i haven't got the fucking yeah no you like idiot. looked over at me all concerned and you're like <laughs> i don't know what they're saying and you're just dingo blah <laughs> yeah just thick australian accents and mustaches well, and he was like laughing really like like a lot and just kind of going on and on and was kind of drunk too. So tossing that in, I was like, I haven't got the fucking foggiest idea. Yeah, no, I don't think you could have got that on like a non-slurry and like, pronunciation. I think, I think all of Australia is just kind of a shit show. Like our friends in King Parrot were talking about like playing a fucking grindcore show at that like fried chicken restaurant. I finally saw pictures of that. It's a pizza place. Oh, it's a pizza yeah, place. Yeah, it's a pizza place. I finally saw fucking pictures of it. It looks legit. Is it greasy? It looks so greasy. I would love it. That's my favorite kind of venue. <laughs> uh, where you like, you gotta make sure you're wearing good shoes because you might slip on the floor. Yeah, but I can also get pizza I and mean, watch grindcore. That's fair. Like perfect I think fusion. You, you could like add pizza to just about anything, and most people would be down. It's true. It's true. Mm-hmm. Pizza at the bowling alley. Yeah. I had a dream actually that we took up bowling, but that's another story for. Yeah, no, don't later. don't talk about that. <laughs> that's shameful. <laughs> Oh, boy. So, yeah, a group of kids go out camping, and they're like, oh, let's go fuck in a tent, and it'll be weird. And then, uh... With they... the light on, so yeah, everyone can see yeah, us. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you can see the boobs, but... And the the weenus. But, like, anyone walking by can but, see yeah. you getting mounted by your fucking weird boyfriend. Oh, yeah. But, like, it's in a tent, so you're all, like, half hunched over, because the tent is kind of, like, a low ceiling, and, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's... I don't, I don't know. It was for that shot... Like the faraway shot of the tent with like the silhouettes. And oh, whatnot, totally. And whatnot. Your little, it looks like an adult puppet show. Yeah. <laughs> shadow puppets. Yeah, it's X rated. <laughs> X rated yeah. shadow puppets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm down. I'm it's adults down. only, yeah. Yeah, fuck, why not? That can be like the new uh, VIP booth in like sex stores. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So there, this is your standard monster movie. I think I hear something. Would you go check? No, babe, I'm not gonna go check. Or, no, I mate, I'm not gonna go check. Put your titties on my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I think they open up the tent, and there's literally just a boar that's like, "Hey, yeah, this is awkward." Yeah, and it's just a huge, gigantic boar that came out of nowhere. There's, there's no. I don't know how you wouldn't hear that, but I'm. I don't care. The thing was like the size of an SUV. Oh, yeah. You just hear it like stomping. Like... Or grunting or smell it. Pigs oh, yeah. Are... I think you'd smell it. Pigs stink. Maybe you came from upwind. Downwind, upwind. Upwind. I mean, fuck, why not? Like, pigs are kind of grody. I, I don't know. Ugh. Delicious, but. Oh, very delicious. Yeah, and then the boar's is like, hey, how's it going? So this is awkward, and I'm going to kill you. And then he, like, puts his tusk through the chick's titty and, like, rips her tummy out and, like, it just, yeah, and then he ends up tearing up the whole campsite and, then like, everyone dies. You know, though, I, I'm pretty sure boars are vicious enough that this thing didn't need to be gigantic. It was gigantic. It was, like, the size of an SUV, but... Yeah, because they have wild pigs like yeah. that they show, and they're just kind of standard pig size. Yeah. But I mean, even at the same time, like regular pigs are like four hundred pounds. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think they could fuck you up. I think so too. Well, I mean, look at that. What was that character in? Um, was it in Hannibal, where he like got high, and Hannibal Lecter convinced him to cut his face off and then feed it to the pigs? Yeah, that was in. Yeah, I think it was in Hannibal or Red Dragon. That no, that's what he does to people. He feeds people to pigs. But those are just regular pigs. I'm talking boars, like mm -hmm. Timon and Pumbaa. Well, Timon, or but Pumba, like evil Pumba Pumba. Was a, Pumba was a warthog. Right, it's in the song. Mm -hmm. I got downhearted. How did you feel every time that I? Mm, hey, Pumba, not in front of the kids. Fart jokes. Am I right, Disney? Maybe that'll be in the live action one. I love that Disney's like scraping the bottom of the barrel so much that they're just doing CG remakes of like cartoon classics. Oh yeah. You got to keep those licenses. Fucking cursed information. Yeah. So our board tears up a campsite. I felt that like, this is going to sound kind of weird. 
but like boar started off a little slow you get mm-hmm. to see like the campsite get torn up but then you get to see like bill mosley's family and his wife and then like there's a, a whole son of... and a daughter there's like family drama yeah you get a whole lot of bill mosley and you're going okay when's he gonna do the crazy shit yeah when's he gonna do the crazy shit when's he gonna whip out like a knife and just like cut someone's face off yeah yeah or like a uh, creepily force someone to give him a blow job or oh yeah right that whole thing. <laughs> that right. whole chest. Devil's nuts. Rejects, right? Yeah. Right. Um, we can talk about the underwhelming Three from Hell trailer as well. But yeah, that's like there's like, like family drama going on. Like the, the older daughter has her boyfriend with her and the boyfriend and the brother are kinda like, Hey bro, let's be bros and like but the But then he's brother... also like, Yo, your fucking sister S's my D all the time in front of fucking the dad and the mom and the little brother and I was like yeah. You guys are okay with this? Like, you were obviously aware she S's the D, but really? Yeah, and then she's, like, talking about getting her ass ate, which, I mean, good for you, sister. But then she starts talking about eating his ass, and I was just like, I don't know if any, like, parent wants to hear about their dear daughter tossing someone's salad no. while that person is present and sweaty and wearing, like, above-the-knee coral pink shorts. Coral. Ugh. Just terrible. So that was, like, weird, and I felt like that that dialogue was, like, shoehorned in there, because, like, Bill mostly had all this, like, kind of, like, kind dad dialogue, which was weird, and then, like, there was, like, yeah, she fucking sucks my dick and (laughs) licks my balls, like, (laughs) and then, like, the little emo kid was just, like, I'm gonna put in my AirPods, and I was, like, me too, kid. Yeah. Can I have one? Yeah, fuck. Turn up some fucking rap music, I don't wanna listen to this bullshit. Um... And they, yeah, so this family, there's all this kind of family drama, which I wasn't really like eh. the the I'm daughter's here, yeah. the daughter's boyfriend goes for a walk with Bill Mosley and is like, hey, uh, you know, I'm thinking of like asking your daughter to marry me, and uh, we've been dating for seven months, and then like Bill Mosley's like, bro, bro, <laughs> so so early, bro, why? And yeah, like I I kind of thought that that was like weird and like weirdly kind of shoehorned in there like i i wasn't sure what the point of that was so it's not just a bore fucking people up but i mean i guess but i didn't really give a shit gotta get the human story we don't and i fucking we're gonna talk about that when we talk about godzilla but the one character that i really loved in this was played by nathan jones and he's an australian wrestler he played bernie yes he's uh he's the one of the sons of a Morton Joe and Mad Max. He's the bald. I was going to say he's the bald son, but I'm pretty sure like half the fucking <laughs> cast is bald in Mad Max. And yeah, he's like the one with the minigun who fights Max on the back of the a Morton Joe's truck. Yeah. So he's six foot ten and he is just a huge man. Watching him like exist, exist was so fascinating because he's so huge. Like, amazingly, ridiculously huge. Mm-hmm. He is straight up two feet almost taller than I am. Yeah. He could just wear you like a backpack. I Yeah, it could be like a Master and Blaster situation. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. like a Who Run Barter Town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like... And um, there's pigs in Barter Town, so I mean, it's really... We're already, this is, we're already close Yeah, we're halfway the there. And I mean, if you read the YouTube comments, apparently I'm a pig, so... <laughs> All right. Well, that was like a wee you wee you take myself to the fucking burn ward. Um, I was also thinking that it could be like a master blaster situation, or it could be like a the little guy in Ace Ventura, too. Little guy in Ace Ventura, too. Like when he has to fight the. Oh yes, yes. The little what you two guy. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, it's like been the... a long time since I've seen Ace Ventura too. Which is weird because we have the poster in our. Yeah, and it greets me every morning precious Mm. gift but this man uh nathan jones he's huge and just watching him like splash around in a creek like i could just watch like 90 minutes of him like fucking trying to get into houses trying to get in yeah trying to navigate a normal size he's so he's so big and he's so built that like he has that like bodybuilder thing with his arms where like they don't go down all the way at the side so they are kind of like up and forward and he just is like this rippling hunk of a man and trying to get him like wedged into a car he's just a big old chunk of meat yeah 
He is like face. a big old beefcake. Yeah. And I was 100% here for it. I also thought that his character got like the best lines. Oh, yeah. Like, because he was such, like, he was obviously kind of like the comic relief and like hamming it up, which there's... Hamming the f- it up, That's man. our first pig joke. Which is what I said when we started watching this. I was like, how many bring home the bacon? That really fries my bacon. Jokes are we going to get or... You know, not, not as many as I thought. No, there wasn't. We got, I think, one. Yeah. There was like one one joke and that was it. Which Unless they're like Australia focus jokes and they just went over our heads. Yeah. Have a fucking Vegamite sandwich. Fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Um I thought that he he was like my favorite character for sure. And so he was the wife's like brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, him getting, like, cramming himself into a Jeep and then singing along to... Uh... Ice Ice Baby? Yes. Yeah. Because I, like, when the song opened, I was just like, well, is this fucking under pressure? I'll freak out. <laughs> but, yeah. So the family is like, we're going to go have a picnic in the Australian Outback. And which was weird. And then Bill mostly goes on that walk and the dude's like, I want to ask your daughter to marry me. And then he's like, Hey, wait a second. There's a pig over there. Kablamo. Well, yeah, no, the kid, like the, the boyfriend just like fucking pushes Bill Mosley down and takes off. Yeah. Like a coward. I mean, I would run from the boar too, but maybe don't push him. Yeah. Yeah. That was not, I don't know. I don't That's know not gentlemanly. Was. I don't know what the fuck was going on there. So the kid gets, like, pretty much immediately killed by the boar. And then, like, Bill Mosley... Or, no, he doesn't get killed. The fucking um, Bill Mosley gets killed. Yeah. He gets his head ripped off. Yeah. Yeah. And then the kid's like, run away! Or, no. How does... The kid gets killed. The the Yeah, it was right the first time. The fiancé, the soon-to-be fiancé gets killed. And uh, Bill Mosley is like, you need to run away. Or, no. Did I fuck that up? That's the other way around. Is Bill Mosley gets killed, and then he runs up, and he's like, oh, he got dad, or he got your dad. Yeah, dad's dead, we need to run away. Yeah. And then he gets killed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, very quickly after. Which, again, the board is like, he has like these like teleporting powers, where he's just like, hello. Yeah, he's like Jason. Right. Or Michael. Yeah, like, I, what the fuck? You can just like, on? show up where you need to be. Yeah, he yeah. He just like, runs out of a portal, like, the game Portal. Yeah. Just like fucking, or like that's Stargate. Why don't, yeah, that's why you don't hear him. Just opens up and boom. Just a fucking pig, pig related swine Stargate. There we yeah. go. Um, and the family's like, oh my God, my fiance got killed. Blah. And then uh, the big guy, Bernie, comes out of nowhere and he literally picks up the like the girl over his shoulders and is like, let's fucking go. And she's like screaming and yelling. Like, um, and they run away. And the boar is thundering after them. And then, like, the little kid gets dragged away. And then the mom's all pissed off. She was like, you didn't save my son. And he was like, I saved part of your family. What What about you saving yourself? Yeah, right? Which well, I got so many rude. arms. All little. Like, be thankful that there's some of you. Yeah, you got half. Yeah, this is survival of the fittest. But, okay. And they're like, I don't know what we're going to do about this boar. They also don't seem, like, really that pissed off at it. Really? Like, well, I mean, they're pissed off, but they're kind of not at the same time. You can't get angry at a bear for doing bear stuff. You can't fair. get angry at a boar for doing giant boar stuff. Though it did look undead. So I want more on that. Yeah, it was kind of... It had, it like, had like, the, like I said, the milky eye and like some exposed bones. Yeah. But I mean, that said, I don't know a lot about fucking wild boar. Maybe they can just have exposed bones. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, if you ever call, like, conservation officers on, like, injured animals, nine times out of ten, they'll be like, yeah, they'll figure it out. Fair enough. I called a conservation officer on, a, like, a wounded deer once, and the deer had had its leg broken, and the conservation officer was like, yeah, it'll either get fixed or it'll fall off. And I was just like, so, fuck me, I guess? Yeah, so you can just find, like, a busted up deer leg? sitting around apparently that's why people find them all over the place and like why their dogs will like bring deer legs because they either fall off or they just get torn off of deer skeletons Uh. but yeah i guess they just i was like like you can't how does a broken bone get fixed if the deer doesn't go to like the deer hospital just goes to a deer doctor (laughs) the doctor sets it the deer yeah fucking deers with his hooves Oh my god, it's a deer doctor. I'm a deer physician. I went to Buckminster University. Ugh. Um 
I didn't like I felt the movie kind of started to drag a little bit in the middle like where they're like we have to go and like fight the boar but we're gonna stay in this little shack and like that was kind of yeah it was a weird choice like a little bit but then the the boar finds them because he's like i see you in the shack and then uh bernie ends up taking like jason Stath- jason statham style takes a like a hunting knife and starts fighting the boar they're like oh my god he got killed we're gonna run away now and uh it just kind of like goes weirdly for a shit like mm-hmm. it's not that it got like terrible it's just that there was parts that like didn't make sense there was like the australian local guy who's like a drunk and he's roaming around camping in the woods and he finds like these dead people and then there's one lady that's like almost dead and he tries to save her and then the boar comes upon him and then the boar's all pissed off and he's trying to like hunt the boar and he's like i got a shotgun i'm gonna kill his boar and like it just kind of it just really goes on yeah, it's a little bit. Messy. It's yeah, I wasn't sure like what storyline I should be like paying the most attention to. Basically, like obviously spoiler alert for this whole thing, which I probably should have popped on the first little bit, but the the family ends up facing off with the boar. The little brother didn't actually get killed. Bernie didn't get killed, but he had his like intestines ripped out by the boar and he was like, eh, it's a flesh wound. He's fine. Australian. You it's can just fine. pack him back in there and like put some eucalyptus on there. Totally. You can just kill, heals everything. Yeah. And, uh, then the mom ends up taking like a shotgun to the boar and like shoots it like five times. Yeah. And then it finally goes down and they're like, okay, we're safe now. Let's start our adventure. And they like get into the Jeep and drive away. And then, uh, final scene is the boar getting back up. Surprise. (laughs) Didn't expect that. Well, that'd be like taking a shotgun to like an elephant and expecting it to really like do much yeah i mean you got to go over there and like coup d'etat finish that finish the job yeah or like jason statham, make sure it's done jason statham in the mag and like put a knife through its eyeball yeah 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 i don't i don't fucking know there was one scene missing speaking of like the mag i feel like someone could have ridden the boar oh while 100%. attacking it like i understand the logistics and why that didn't happen but I would have loved it. Just like a guy hanging off the back of it, stabbing it. Yeah. I, That's for the sequel. Yeah. Um, so I think like overall, I, I liked Boar. It was a pretty quick watch. It did kind of drag a little bit in the middle. And at the start, I wasn't sure like, um, like the human drama kind of element with it, which is weird because that was my main criticism from Godzilla 2014, which is a Godzilla movie that had maybe 15 minutes of Godzilla in it total yeah. throughout the entire two hours and a bit runtime. So my kind of thought is, is that if I'm watching a monster movie, I don't want to see people struggling I, with their emotions. No, I barely care. I want to see monsters like popping off. Yeah, I'm ripping shit up. Yeah, so I, but at the same time, like, I posted that criticism on my Facebook a while ago, and someone who I had recently added as a friend was like, no, that was, like, Godzilla 2014 was my favorite Godzilla, and I was just like, ugh. Yeah. Why? Wow. And I was like, there's always somebody out there, I guess. Yeah. But, like, I absolutely, I, like, I don't want to know about human beings. I want to know less about human beings. Yeah, I agree. I know too much. Yeah, so that was kind of like my criticism with my main criticism with Boar was with just Boar. there was a, the storyline got like a little bit murky. It didn't make the movie unwatchable though. It didn't get into like say Godzilla twenty fourteen where it was just like oh my god, mm-hmm. like less on your fucking family for Christ's sake. But it was okay, like um, definitely watchable. It's out on Shutter and. Shutter has been killing it lately for releases. I really think that they're like doing a lot um like their documentaries their podcasts um june's pretty tight for their releases as well they have um uh, that visitations podcast with elijah wood and daniel noah uh that had just started and that one's really cool to check out they have like a queer horror um thing kind of starting this month for pride month yeah they put um what is it knife, knife plus heart knife plus heart yeah, yeah. that's supposed to be really so that good. comes out on the on june 20th uh they have wild boys the old dark house vampiros lesbos which that's mm. a fucking classic and if you haven't seen that that's like old skinamax shit oh yeah and that's like and the thing is like you, you read the title and you're like ooh. oh and then like the reality of it is you're like it, this is blue balls forever oh yeah but 
check it out. It's definitely still worth it. It's Euro sleaze, um, is it not? Yeah. 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 It's like a, I think Blue Underground did a release of its prize. Yeah. But, um, they've also got Hellraiser, which Hellraiser is a queer horror movie. Well, Clef Barker's gay. So I guess. It's all like BDSM gear. And I mean, that's not necessarily gay. Yeah, that's but... not unique to the gay community. People no. just like to get their freak on. It's true. Hmm. Okay. Um, Nightbreed, uh, Let the Right One In, which, yeah. Um, Predestination, Elena, Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl, Rift, and Lizzie. Which Lizzie was like... Oh, it definitely fits, but I just it, wasn't it a big fan. It fits, but that movie was like short on scares. And it was like a slow burn. Yeah. Very slow burn. Which is weird to say about the Lizzie Borden killings. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because I, um, like, that was, like, legitimately a theory. Was that the two of those, those two were up to some lesbianic hijinks. Yeah. So that one, that one was really good. Um, as well, like, I thought that that was kind of an interesting addition. I'm surprised that they didn't add that what keeps you alive. That would have maybe fit. Mm-hmm. A little bit more, but I'm not sure if that got picked up by another streaming service. Might be on Prime. It might be. Yeah, and you can check out. Um, we're talking about these queer horror movies because obviously it is Pride Month. There's lots of like horror sites doing Pride releases. Fangoria and Fright Rags teamed up to do a rainbow Fangoria logo shirt, which you can get um, today until midnight, I think. So get it if you can. If that's if that's your jam. Um, it's cool that Shudder's doing this, and I th- I, th- I just I think that's really cool. I, I guess people are still a little pissed off. Yeah, it, Scream but. Factory did that Babadook Pride release. Which, yes. I love it. I love seeing the pictures of people dressed up as the Babadook at Pride, and then there's various, like, incarnations of it. Like, you have people who are pretty faithful to the actual Babadook outfit, and then you have people who pretty much just have, like, the Babadook's face yeah. on, like, sexy like outfit or like someone did like a BDSM Baba duck at like a pride parade. And I saw pictures of it or it's like people dressed in black, but they'll have like rainbow socks on yeah. or whatever. I don't necessarily understand how the Baba duck became a gay icon, but I'm here for it. So, um, I think it was just like a Netflix error. They put it in the like gay and lesbian section by accident. Oh, okay. It's just a meme gone out of control in sentence. Well, I think too, that like the Baba duck's like in the closet. Uh, he, yes. He was, like, in the basement eating bugs, wasn't he? Eating worms? Yeah. That's what you do when yeah. you're duck. Was the Duck scary? I don't know. We I'd... only ever watched it the once, and I like, I'm like, should we watch it again? Probably. I felt that it was, like, really slow and stupid, and that little kid screaming just pissed me off. Yeah. I it... love the Duck as, like, a character, like, separate from him. Like, the meme has, like, outlived the movie, I think. Mm-hmm. I, think the, I think the meme is better than the film. Yeah, that's fair. So that's how it works sometimes. I've seen lots of like enamel pins of like the rainbow Babadook or like the Babadook with his ass out. Yes. Um, I saw a pin of like, oh God, I think it was maybe Jason or Michael spanking the Babadook with like a paddle. And I was like, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. At least they went with Jason and Michael and not Freddy because yikes. That's a big fucking, yeah, it's going to pop a big ol' yikes yeah, on that. Don't I don't, do don't want to think about Freddy Krueger's sexuality, which is. Deviant. We know what it is. It's, it's not, not great. Good. It's not great. So I'm stoked to check out this knife heart for sure. Um, and then Wild Boys comes out Monday, June 17th. So that will be... Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised too that they didn't do like Assassination Nation. Uh, the they trans probably, character. They you might can only have, get so many rights. Yeah. And then even if you're like, uh, you know, a horror reviewer and you do a review of the film on a video, which is a positive review... And you use pieces of the trailer, then you get in trouble, and then they make your video not available in certain places. Mm-hmm. Which, that didn't happen to me, but it happened to someone I know. A friend of a friend of mine, just yeah. like freaky stories, so. Rude. Alright, so we're going to leave Boar. What do we give Boar? Uh, I'll give it three and a half tusks out of six. Ugh. Would the thing from Tusk be considered a kaiju? No. Okay. No. Is that like a Frankenstein's monster? Yes. Okay. It's more of a Frankenstein. Okay. What do you what do you give Boar? I want to give Boar like three warts out of six hogs. It's sure. like right in the middle for me. It wasn't like the best monster movie I've seen. It wasn't the worst monster movie I've seen. And I've seen some fucking garbage movies. Mm-hmm. I saw in while I was sorting them cataloging our movie collection, 
I saw a movie in there and it's a DVD and it's still sealed. It has the dollar store price tag on it and it's about fire ants on a plane. Oh, okay. Well, sounds good. And I was just like, how many ants are on this plane? Just two. Like really big ones. Yeah. That's terrifying. So that's, yeah. Anyways, okay. So we're going to leave that and we're going to go to Godzilla King of the Monsters. (laughs) Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Oh my god, I love that they used the fucking the, original score in it. Yeah, I loved it. Um, so we saw Godzilla King of the Monsters last night. We went on cheap night. We went on like a little date with our friend Josh. We even had a coupon for dinner. We were like all like cheap dates last night. Our dinner was paid. All of our dinners were paid for with like a nice coupon. It was only $9 skin of the movie. We got there early. We got the... 3D glasses that we have to wear over our glasses because all three of us wear glasses. Bunch of nerds. Nerds. Just terrible. Bunch of fucking nerds. Yeah. So. I hate double glass in it. I do too. It hurts my head too. I always leave and my ears are kind of pinchy. The struggle is real. Okay. So we had recently watched Godzilla 2014 because I had never seen it. Yeah, I hadn't. I didn't see it. I don't think I'd seen it either. I'd seen clips from it and I knew the like general complaints about it. Yeah. Um, but it never grabbed me because of the complaints that I heard about it. And it just didn't, I love Godzilla, but it did it just didn't visually grab me. It was very brown and gray looking. Yeah. So I wasn't a Godzilla 2014 I found was tough um, I'm just going to double check the runtime on that. Uh, so 102 hours, a little over two hours, yeah. 123 minutes. So uh, my first criticism of Godzilla 2014 was that it was far too long. But King of the Monsters is two hours and 12 minutes. Yeah. And that's fine because there was all sorts of shit popping off. Yeah, that's true. Um, Godzilla 2014 had a lot of human drama elements, like people's families getting torn apart and like, I also felt like it was like a tease of Godzilla. You didn't really get to see Godzilla that yeah. much. And when I go see a monster movie, that's not good. There's, yeah. You need to find a like, you need to find a good middle ground between you show me the monster immediately, a la Darkness Falls, mm-hmm. and you um, hide it, and you hide it and obscure it, and like again in a two hour Godzilla movie, you have maybe ten minutes of Godzilla. When, like it doesn't even need to equate to fully like for me. You don't need to, Godzilla doesn't need to be on the screen all the time for me to like feel that Godzilla is a larger part of the movie. Yeah. Like a main part of it, like just his presence. And like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you know, you know, he's there, you know, that the people are in fucking danger or whatever, you know, shit's going down. Godzilla 2014 didn't do that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It just didn't. I. I I really struggled with Godzilla 2014. I thought it was fucking boring. Yeah. And, like, Godzilla looked pretty cool in it, I thought. I liked that kind of image of Godzilla, but it was just, I thought that it was just, like, kind of a wank, mm-hmm. really. Um, no, King of the Monsters was the Godzilla movie I was after. It was the modern, like, Hollywood take on Godzilla that I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so this one centers more on, like, the family who had their child killed at the end of Mm -hmm. the other Godzilla, their son Andrew, I guess his name was. Um, And the family is played by um, Vera Farmiga is the mom, and she's the, she plays Lorraine Warren in, like, the Conjuring universe. Oh, fuck, that's why she looks so familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... I thought she actually did a pretty good job in this one. It wasn't like totally. Yeah. She's better at kaiju hunting than ghost hunting. Yes. Yeah. I thought definitely. Um, did you know she's married to one of the members of Deadsy? Excuse me? <laughs> what did you just say? What the fuck did you just say to me? That was an old fashioned sentence. Which one? With the professor? Um, Ren Hockey. W- what was his symbol? Synthesizer for the band. Wow. Deadsy. I did not know that. Yeah, that's weird, right? Wow. Cursed I mean, information. That is highly cursed. So he must be... Wow. They're getting back together. Also cursed information. Deadsy? Yeah. Ooh. Apparently. 
Ooh. I mean, they began back together for like 10 years. I don't know why I know this. So I but... wonder if she's related to, um, oh, what's her name? Tasia Farmerja. The, she plays like violets on, uh, uh, American Horror Story in like the first season. She's in like the witch season. Oh, okay. Um, I wonder if they're related. They have the same last name and they kind of look alike. Actually, they have like really long faces. Oh, the old long face. I'll get you. Um, yeah, I thought that she actually played like a pretty good role. She was Ta- Tasia Farmiga is her name. I'm just going to pop a little look here. Married mm-hmm. to the guy from Deadsy, though. That's a that's a trip in the Wayback Machine. Oh, that's her. They're sisters? What? Okay, so she's 24. And Vera's 45. Yeah, that happens. I mean... I mean, Stellan Skarsgård just had a kid, and he's like 81 or whatever. He Well, Stellan Skarsgård's not that old. He's like he's like in his 60s. He's like 81. <laughs> How old he's is he? eternal. He's a Skarsgård. Um, he was just in uh, Chernobyl. He's not that old. All right, you he's be, 67. <laughs> you can be old and be in Chernobyl. Okay, so yeah, Vera Farmiga. She was pretty good, I thought. Uh, and uh, Millie Bobby Brown. She's this was little... her like yeah. debut feature film. I thought she was great. Yeah, she was I great. I thought she was great. I really like Millie Bobby Brown. Um, I, I liked her when I saw her in Stranger Things. I think she's like a pretty good little actress. It was nice to see her. She's growing up. She looks a little bit more like a teenager. Mm-hmm. I think she's what, like 16? Sure. Um, which always like... She's almost too old for Drake now. Oh my God. That's so gross, and I can't believe that people like didn't actually follow through with like canceling Drake. Or uh, that's because I like Hotline Bling too much. Uh, that song's terrible. Yeah, you can like it'll be like uh, Michael Jackson. He'll get canceled in twenty years when everybody's over it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so the family they have like there's, there's there is some family drama in this where like mom and and Millie Bobby Brown and the dad or they're living separate lives because. Godzilla Kaiju your, fight yeah yeah Godzilla killed your child and dad's all mad about Godzilla which is like think about that like you you have a grudge against a giant lizard yeah yeah like yeah, I don't think you're ever gonna resolve that no I guess he did maybe well kind of so we're gonna talk a little bit about the plot so if you haven't seen Godzilla King of the Monsters um, if you're waiting to see it obviously skip ahead and come back and listen to this episode or uh yeah, like, so we're going to give you a spoiler warning right now. So, uh, Vera Farmage's character, character Emma, has created something called the Orca, and it analyzes, like, the bio frequencies of these kaiju, and it allows you to, what like... they call Titans. Yeah, because... which I thought was terrible, because it reminded me too much of Attack on Titan. Yeah, a little. Well, I mean, in the, I think in Godzilla 2014, they called them Motu, so this is better, like, an acronym or whatever. I don't remember what yeah, it stood for. Yeah, because they called the mechanical moths Motus. Masters of the universe. Um, <laughs> monsters of the universe. But yeah, in this, they were just titans, which is way better than an acronym. So I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she's created this orca, and it allows uh, um, you to communicate with a titan or influence its behavior. And uh, Emma takes uh, Maddie her daughter, I mean, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, to this, like, underground research facility to check out Mothra. Yeah, because the the organization they work for, Monarch, which I assume is a Mothra... I don't know if it's a Mothra reference, because it exists in Kong Skull Island, too. Um, They have, like, outposts around the world that you find out are, you know, where they found Titans. And so yes. they build bases around them to either contain them or try and wake them up or whatever they're trying to do. Wake me up. Can't wake up. Wake me up inside. I want to see wake the fucking Mothra inside. cut now. Fuck. Of that song. Yes. Um, Mothra rules. Yeah. I just want to say, like, um, it's also kind of gross to me because, um, like, moths are fuzzy. Mm-hmm. It's a big old fuzzy titan. It's like a fuzzy airplane coming mm-hmm. at you. A little bit. And it's like pissed off I'm like a stinger yeah mothra was kind of cool looking and so they have this like larva that's waking up inside can't wake up 
And they're like, we're going to try to control its behavior. And she's trying to get the orca to work. And she's like, no, I can do it. Don't blow it up. It's a precious baby. It's like a poopa. Yeah, you couldn't stop fucking looking at me and saying poopa. <laughs> because that's, what, that's what those like grubs are. Like they poop hate. <sighs> yes, poop. We get it. <laughs> it's like that Calvin and Hobbes comic where he asked his mom if he was ever a larva and if he poop hated. It's too much. To go to bed um maybe you need an orca to like control my behavior i can just like analyze my brain waves of just yeah. like simpsons quotes and like poop jokes <laughs> neat <laughs> it's just empty in there <laughs> just the fucking like meow mix theme song it's like a... just over and no over. you're just it's like rattling a fucking <laughs> piggy bank with like a penny in it <laughs> ding, 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 ding. yeah so the penny in your brain is the poop thought Dancing around. <laughs> I poop hate it. Yeah. Oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> That's all I could think of. They're trying to like wake this thing up and then like Charles Dance storms the place with a group of eco terrorists and it's supposed to be this like big emotional moment, but I was like, oh, Charles Dance is here. <laughs> I didn't know he was in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh, really? So I was like so Twitter pated by that. I love Charles Dance. He is belligerently sexy. We all know. Belligerent sexy um i also think that charles dance can't play like anyone Any... but a villain oh yeah no 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 no, no. he, I he mean, just he's very good at yelling at people and, and being looking like, angry looking stern yeah like looking disappointed in you when you came home with a b plus yeah like that's that's what he looks like and just like ooh, tywin lannister oh god precious gift so anyways they storm in and shoot everybody and it's supposed to be this fucking thing where you're like oh the scientists are all got killed and it's like whatever yeah pretty much fuck it fuck charles it there's dance. poopa yeah charles dance is like fucking get your poopa under control you gotta come with me come with me and bring the poopa if you want to live yeah mothra takes off yeah mothra's like i like there was a lot of fuck you i'm out moments yeah mothra has a fuck you i'm out moment and then king Ghidorah later has a fuck you i am absolutely out yeah. moment. yeah um, and then Mothra holds up in like a waterfall and is like, I'm going to cocoon myself so I can become the magical moth, which I'm not sure what, what the fuck is that with the Japanese, like using the magical moth as a little girl, like, literal know. deus ex machina. Mm. Magical moth. Um, okay. So, uh, Emma's character gets kidnapped by Charles Dance and they... They're like, okay, well, we're going to take you to this, like, evil base, and you're going to help us wake the, the king of kings, King Ghidorah. And she's like, no, no, you can't help me. But then later she's like, actually, this is why I planned this the whole time. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm also evil. I'm the bad guy. And she goes on, she starts monologuing. She phones her husband to start monologuing. Oh, yeah. Unprovoked monologue. Yeah, and it's like, hello? And it's just someone reading you their manifesto? Just, like, midway through... <laughs> And then I'll destroy Tokyo. <laughs> Hello? Hang on a second. Yes, and the monsters, it was truly the human infection that was to blame the whole time. Mom? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, mom's at it again. <laughs> Told you not to call here. Like that uh, Sublime song, like my mom hits a bottle and goes right to the rock. Um, yikes. To all of that. Yeah. Um, so she phones the, like, Godzilla team that her husband gets yeah, Godzilla picked Hotline. up for. It's, the, it's Monarch. Yeah, Monarch. Who she worked for. Monarch, yeah. Godzilla, Hotline Bling. Yeah. And uh, she, I... They pick up the G phone and they're like, yo. She's like, monologue. Yeah, she really just fucking goes off. And I also have to say that Zhang Ji was in this, the little Chinese yeah. lady. She played uh, Sayuri in Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah. She's ageless. How old is she? Um... I mean, aside from, like, Eternal. How old do you think she is? Like, just by what she looks like. 30. She's 40. Hmm. Um, But she looks the exact same as she did when she was in Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah. And that movie came out fucking... 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was just like, oh, damn. And I was thinking about Memoirs of a Geisha as well, because we just watched that uh, Kung Fu movie. Mm -hmm. And the trailers before had, um, I think her name was Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. And she was like the geisha mother in Memoirs of a Geisha. So I've had Memoirs of a Geisha like floating around weirdly in my head. Yeah, I'll do that. So like the, 
yeah anyways to see Zhang Ji was all like really cool I think she's a really cute little actress which is weird to say about a 40 year old woman but like she she looks like she's like 20 mm-hmm. um and Ken Watanabe as always oh yeah he's fucking, always like, fantastic he is prime and uh I loved him because he was like Godzilla's best friend yeah he was like super fan yeah he like had a. Uh, like, him and Godzilla had those, like, heart necklaces that go together that, like, teen girls buy at Claire's. Oh, yeah. And it was just, like, best kaiju. Yeah. And, like, they each had the half. And Godzilla... I actually really liked Godzilla in this. He was, like, a bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was friendly Godzilla in this. It's not evil Godzilla. He was, like, the Earth protector Godzilla. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. So, anyways. The... Mom God- monologues. Monarch. Momologue. Yeah. Momologues. The vagina momologues phones her ex-husband and is like i'm evil she gives like a like a speech worthy of like the villain from the incredibles kind of and i was mm-hmm. just like all right you're just really going on and on and charles dance is even like kind of looking at her like why are you doing this yeah wouldn't you wouldn't your plan be better hashed if you just like did it and didn't tell everybody well, i'm pretty sure he calls doing? her out for it yeah he's like, like later the fuck are you doing yeah. um she's like ha, 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 i'm gonna wake the monsters and they're gonna bring us back to a state of normal existence because we are the human infection <laughs> and they're like okay well you're crazy so they decide to track her and go to the base that she's at with uh madison and madison's like mom why are you crazy and um she starts waking up king Ghidorah, mm-hmm. which is like king Ghidorah is like the big bad Oh, yeah. He looked great. I thought that this was a fantastic... I mean, he always kind of looks... And I mean, I like I said, I love the old movies. But all of the monsters look goofy. Because oh, his rubber suits. Uh, it's part of the charm. But King Ghidorah always looked double goofy because of the necks. Like the extra, the two extra heads. And this, he looked awesome. Like, he looked yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it, I thought that it played to um looking like dragony but also looking snaky but yeah. also looking like just generally mean and then it also played to like animal behavior like which if you had three fucking heads of like awful reptiles they would 100 percent be snapping and biting at each other yeah which it showed a lot of like the middle heads seem to be more dominant and like kind of controlling the behavior of the other two yeah. heads or like trying to they were like when Mothra covers them in goo, like trying to pull the yeah. goop off of them. When I found it interesting, when I was like looking up, you know, more about the movie, that they had three different motion actors capture for each head. So like one dude played one head. I think that's super interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. No, I think that that's cool because then you get kind of like different kinds of movement because each head would have its own separate brain. Mm hmm. But then, like, imagine, though, like, what kind of fucking, uh, like, co-op you'd have to be playing. Like, does one head control the whole body? Oh, yeah. That'd be like Octodad. Yeah. Where you have, like, okay, so you control the wing and I got the fucking, like, did King Ghidorah have four legs or just two? I think he just has two. Okay. So he's more of, like, a, got, like, a wyvern body. Yeah. Um, so you control the one, you can, I think he had two tails, though. So you control one of the tails on the other foot and then I got... Like this I got one of the wings and, and the other foot, yeah. and then the middle head. I guess has got the wing, like and the butt. <laughs> control the pooping. Um, yeah, I thought King Ghidorah looked really cool. So mm-hmm. when he wakes up, he starts tearing shit up immediately, which is like why these people are like, and what "Oh did my you god, this horrible three-headed dragon that's pissed off and shoots radiation out of not one but three heads." Yeah, like oh, we found all this like ancient information about how. These were the ancient gods, which I really liked. I did as well. Like, an aside, like, I think they did a really good job of making the Titans feel like gods. Mm-hmm. Like, primitive gods and not just big old fucking T-Rex, oversized T-Rexes. Um, yeah, like, what did you expect when you woke this guy up? That he would just be like, I don't think he's a morning person. Right. He's clearly not. Yeah. Like, he's going to rip shit up. Yeah, and which is what he starts doing immediately, which is like, oh, look at our beautiful base. It's getting destroyed. Yeah. Oh. But, I mean, she kind of sets the detonator charge to, like, wake him up and destroy the base anyways. Oh, yeah. But um, he starts literally popping off. Yeah, and then guess who shows up? The big G-man. Daddy's home. And how does he get there? He goes through the fucking hollow earth. And I <laughs> almost lost my mind when they're just like, oh, Godzilla, we're tracking him. It's okay. We'll find him. Oh, no, he's he's disappeared from the tracking monitor. 
I knew it. I, and this like fucking one guy just starts screaming about how the earth is hollow and he knew it all along. And I fucking almost lost it. Hollow earth, flat earth. No, it's all about hollow earth. It's not flat. It can't be <laughs> fucking hollow if it's flat. Uh, yeah, it could be like a cracker, like a Ritz cracker. I guess, but that sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no, great. so flat earth confirmed in the monster universe. <laughs> fucking Christ. Hollow earth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of didn't like how they called uh, King Ghidorah Monster Zero. I was kind of like... Yeah, I was a little old, yeah. But. It, it was kind of Patient zero e for yes. me, where I was like, all right, well. Yeah, that would have made more sense if he birthed all of them. But I guess, to be fair, they don't know the etymology. Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. Of uh, the di- the dinosaurs, the titans. So, I mean, whatever. They called him King. That's good enough for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so daddy shows up and yeah. it's like what the fuck are you doing and him and king Ghidorah get into like a radiation battle and the team's trying to get away in their plane which gets fucked up immediately i think if you have like multiple flying like tail swipes and wings and you've got three fucking huge heads like popping off and just like atomic breath going everywhere yeah i like i also think that like isn't godzilla terribly radioactive i was thinking that like <laughs> it was like throughout the entire movie but then i was like i want in like the sequel, like in uh, King Kong vs. or Godzilla vs. King Kong in 2020, I want to see like even just a scene where so there's some people dealing with the fact that they've been close to this battle and are fucking irradiated Chernobyl style. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing where like I was like, I wouldn't you get like Godzilla cancer? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like Doctor Manhattan, right? Yeah, like in Watchmen. Yeah. yeah. No, totally. Yeah. That's, I was like, thinking that the whole time, and then later, I was like, "That's too serious for this movie." Yeah. Or like later on, someone sees your skeleton or your like limbic system like running around the yeah, hallway by the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Screaming out in the yard. That's just me. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um. Um. So yeah, that was kind of weird. And then they're like, uh, "I also feel like that would be like really overwhelming if you had like two huge monsters and you're pretty much at their feet. Like, I don't even know if your brain would let you see." anything oh like yeah that. like just going to shock i think your brain would just be like you know what fucking i'm rebooting this <laughs> like, yeah um so daddy uh godzilla fights king Ghidorah, and they start ripping shit up and then he literally rips off one of king Ghidorah's heads mm-hmm. um but king Ghidorah can regrow them it's just fucking fuck yeah it. just That's what he does so it doesn't really matter but king Ghidorah has the ultimate like fuck you i'm out and just like straight up into the air just like goodbye. Yeah. See you later. And then it's revealed that this like terror like so they get away and they're all fine and fucking whatever who cares. Um, then the terrorist group reveals that they're gonna go to these different bases around the world and wake up different monsters and like the next base that they're gonna wake up has Rodan in it. Yeah. Which down I wasn't, in Mexico. Down in down Mexico way. Eh? Fucking tequila and Rodan. Yeah. Tequila tacos and Rodan. I didn't like the way that Rodan looked. I wasn't like super. I like sold part of it. Rodan. I didn't like his like lava skin but i like the fact that he looked like he was perpetually on fire dripping lava see i just like the old pterodactyl looking rodan like yeah. a big big ass pterodactyl which is like a horrifying thought in and of itself a giant pterodactyl i think we're all pterodactyls giant fair yeah i guess there was probably like those little ones like flapping around because wasn't that, like that'd be like more like fucking bats yeah just like a bird sized one, or just like a like a robin. I was gonna, like in I was gonna, I was gonna say a hairless bird, but like a featherless bird just flapping bird. around. Birds are awful, yeah. Um, and pterodactyls, I think, like that would be no, yeah, no bueno, yeah. So, I, I like, I prefer him looking like a pterodactyl. I didn't like that he had lava dripping off of him, like, I was kind of like, what the fuck? Well, he, he had to live in a volcano, right. That's where he nested. Yeah, but I mean, dragons live in like near heat sources and they're not dripping lava. Well, if they didn't do that, he would look like a dragon. I respect it. They took a chance. Yeah. He's not a super main character. No, so. no. And he kind of gets his shit like ripped up by King Ghidorah as well. Yeah. Like, King Ghidorah. Well, like... he's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, you know, he'll wait and see how this battle plays out kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, because he ends up, like, essentially being a turncoat. He was like, ah, I'm angry. And uh, the U.S. Navy is like, we're going to release an oxygen missile. The oxygen destroyer. Yeah, so you need to bring Godzilla and King Ghidorah and Rodan to all one location. So Godzilla and King Ghidorah start ripping shit up in the middle of the ocean, and they release this oxygen destroyer missile, which 
like, oh my god, it kills Godzilla. And then King Ghidorah is just like, that was irritating. Yeah, pretty much, and just fucks <laughs> off. He's like, see ya later. And then he like, hang, doesn't he just hang out in the volcano and you get that sick ass shot of like him wings spread with the cross? Yeah, on top of, that was like such a cool shot. Yeah. Like it was, it looked like a heavy metal album cover. Oh, so much of the movie was like art ready, just like art print ready for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Rodan kind of like bows down to him and, uh, um, yeah, he is just ripping, King Ghidorah is ripping shit up and then Mm -hmm. he starts waking up all of the other Titans in their different places. So you see like a woolly mammoth, you see like a spider, uh, King Kong heard the call, but he, yeah, according to the novelization, it's not really like they hint at King Kong being in the universe so often that like you you have to not be paying attention at all to miss it like the four different references to him um but he doesn't show up in in the movie they don't really explain it but in the novelization they do and it's essentially willie hears you willie don't care <laughs> which is fucking yeah. metal <laughs> king kong's sick of this shit he's not participating yeah. in the battle royale He's yeah. going to hang out on Skull he, Island. Uh, he was screening his calls and let Ghidorah go straight through to voicemail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Left him on red. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not responding. Um, oh, not Ghidorah's, this drama again. Ghidorah's just tagging him in memes. And yeah. it's like, no, I'm not. We're not doing this, dude. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the, the army realizes, like, oh, we killed our best chance of defeating King Ghidorah. Godzilla's god. Ooh. And, like, Ken Watanabe's character gets all sad. He's like, he's my best friend. He's gone. <laughs> you see him taking off the best friend necklace. Yeah. Putting it in a little box. Um, and Zhang Ji's character, Dr. Eileen Chen, discovers that uh, Ghidorah is, like, an ancient alien who wants to terraform the planet. I just hear, like, Giorgio Sucolo somewhere in the background being like, what's that? I fucking knew it. <laughs> um... Uh, Mothra emerges from her cocoon and she's like a cool magical moth now. They also reveal that like Mothra is like a lady. Like a lady. I always assume Mothra was a lady. Oh, really? But I mean, they confirm it. In they confirm that. Like, she's the queen. Yeah, she's the queen of the monsters. And uh, since she's kind of got like a thing going on, she's been hitting it and quitting it with Godzilla. She goes like and hovers above his lair and is like, he's down there. Yeah. Save him. Or like where he's, well, I guess, yeah, it is his lair. Yeah, he has like a lair in the hollow earth. In fucking Atlantis, excuse me? Yes. It's, they didn't say it, but we all know it. There yeah. was like, what are the, what are the ancient alien warship and dudes from like actual history? Mesopotamians? Yes. Yeah. There's like statues that look like that. Yeah. And like murals and you're like this is obviously atlantis yeah it was supposed to be like atlantis or like some lemurian shit or something yeah go under the sea under the sea let's find atlantis under the sea and they they're like okay let's take a nuclear bomb down there and we'll like help godzilla recharge like it's like plugging your iphone into like those super fast chargers yeah. and they find godzilla he's basically taking a radiation nap he's like mm. he's just chilling out in the bathtub like oh i gotta recuperate <laughs> which he had like a whole like he had like steps built up to his lair and there was like statues and stuff there which i have some questions i have questions too it's like... very radioactive down there yeah so who was down there building that stuff well maybe they could survive it okay I don't know. Like back in the day. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Just like uh, how Sodom and Gomorrah was apparently like a nuclear like firestorm. Yeah. Neat. It was God it was Godzilla. It was it was Gojira. Um so yeah, they come up with this plan, they're gonna detonate a missile to help Godzilla heal because it'll take too long for him to heal enough to fight King Ghidorah, which is like the US government got itself in this pickle the whole time and uh dr godzilla ken watanabe's character is like i'll go manually detonate the missile and they're like it'll kill you and he's like that's fine here's my notes and he takes a missile and he like here's my notes and my best friend necklace yeah no he puts it back on um <laughs> he puts the best friend necklace back on he hugs hugs the missile takes it up the steps and he sees godzilla he sets the missile to go off and then he takes his helmet off which i thought that the radiation was bad enough that it would just immediately kill you takes his helmet off all of fucking prometheus and alien covenant 
and then is like touching Godzilla's nose and he's like sayonara tomodachi sayonara my friend and I was like I was like emotional like I thought I was gonna start fucking crying and then I was just like you can't cry at the big like <laughs> lizard movie because I already almost fucking I think I did cry at the new Planet of the Apes movies those movies were sad those were sad the yeah. f- the the like final one was super sad but i like i felt my when throat dry out family gets killed oh yeah. my god i felt like my throat dry out and i was just like Ugh. you're the biggest fucking loser in the world <laughs> if you're crying over godzilla and like godzilla he looks so sad and like sick and he was like mm, i'm hurt and then like i thought they did a great job like actually emoting the monsters for what you could yes you know give them like emotion and facial expressions yes um which I thought was cool. Anyways, the explosion seeks to make Godzilla more powerful than ever. He goes from being like chaotic neutral to chaotic good mm-hmm. at his most powerful. Yeah. It was just like those like very oh, powerful he's like super lines. Saiyan. Yeah, he basically went Super Saiyan. And so he goes to fight uh, Ghidorah and um, it, it, it's like a big battle of the Titans. Ghidorah is calling all the Titans together. Millie Bobby Brown is. Because she calls, oh right, right. She calls King Ghidorah using the orca, the orca that, that she stolen. steals, and they're conveniently in hanging out in a base in Boston, which is where her parents and her lived before they, the family broke up. Dad broke up the band. Um, and yeah, so she gets to Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium. I don't know. Sure. Um, no, it's the Cubs. Fenway Park. Fenway Park. Thank you. Um. She gets there and she hooks the orca up to the sound system and starts broadcasting it, which, you know, makes King Ghidorah go, holy, wait, what the fuck? Goes to investigate and then Godzilla follows for the final showdown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And King Ghidorah grabs a hold of Godzilla and is, like, preparing to, like, kick his ass because he, like, wraps him up like a snake, which is what I thought was cool because it kept Ghidorah from being too much of a dragon. Yeah. Like, it still kept him, like, like, because he wraps Godzilla up in his heads. Yeah, I was and interested. And like, grabbing him, and, like, he almost seems to be, like, sucking power out of him. That's kind of what I thought. Like, he was, like, absorbing his yeah nuclear power. And then, like, Monarch is, like, Godzilla's getting ready to achieve critical mass. We gotta get the fuck out of here. So it was, like, a very, very video gamey thing. Like, we oh, gotta, yeah. you gotta leave the area with all this stuff and make sure your team's safe before something the timer blows runs up. Out. Yeah. Yeah. So then Mothra shows up, and she's all pissed off. And she's like, meh. I'm going to save my boyfriend. And she sacrifices herself and her dust falls on Godzilla and makes him. It's life dust or something. Yeah. We yeah. don't need an explanation. It it heals him. Yeah. But the same thing happens in Terraformars. Yeah. Where the lady becomes like the magical moth and her like dust is like. Yeah, it's got to be. I don't know if it's just like a Mothra thing. Or like in like one of their stories or something. Yeah. Like or magical. Terraformars is like a Mothra thing. That's very possible, actually. Yeah. They could just be just like a, from Just like a reference, like an anime reference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's it's kind of dumb. Like, there's like some human drama thrown in where like the character of Emma, she's like, we have to go find, we have to go find our daughter. And then they like just reunite. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to draw King Ghidorah away. Bye. Yeah. Which was kind of dumb like he was how far did you draw him away two steps right like she's like i'm in a jeep and i'm driving really fast yeah, she down pulls the like road. a fucking ian malcolm from jurassic park and is like ah follow me except it's not as charismatic no and, and like given that the city is in basically ruins you couldn't drive like 100 miles an no. hour down a street without hitting something no. at high speed which king Ghidorah ends up like you know, she is mortally wounded and she has her like final showdown where King Ghidorah, which he wouldn't, a monster that size wouldn't even see a human being. No, probably You not. wouldn't even, it wouldn't even feel it if it stepped on you. Like, but he, all of his, three of his heads go and look at her and he's staring at her and she's like, long life the king. And then daddy Godzilla comes out and he's glowing red and he's all radioactive and everything around him is melting. That was pretty cool. Which, yes. Again, Godzilla's very radioactive at that point. Like, he's, like, several elephant's foots. So, the people who were, like, watching from the sidelines, like, oh, what yeah, was going right? on there? Like, <laughs> I want to see the one week later. Yeah. Where they're just, like, they look like fucking cheese melted over some fucking ground beef. They're all, like, melting away Chernobyl style. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
he ends up disintegrating King Ghidorah with some radioactive blasts. And then um, all of the Titans come and bow before him. I love that. I was, it was great. It was so cheesy, but I liked it. Yeah. And like Rodan fucking turncoat. Yes. Bowing, bowing down. down. I would have almost been okay if Godzilla just like fucking snapped his neck. Yeah. And like, fuck you. Yeah. And then uh, uh, during the credits, you get to see like news clippings and like yeah, there's like monarch news clippings. Which the Titans are, you know, healing, helping to heal the earth, which is something they talked about in the movie where that wherever the Titans had been, like their radiation had caused like the earth to kind of like reclaim it and like it rec- reclaim San Francisco. It's good radiation. It's like good fat. Yeah. It's not like that bad fat, bad radiation. It's good radiation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they find like another Mothra egg or what they think is another Mothra egg. Uh, and that the Titans are all going to fucking Skull Island to see Kong or be like, yo, why didn't you come to the party? You left us all in red. Um, and then cave paintings show Godzilla battling Kong. And then there is a post credit scene where you get to see Charles Dance's character who lived, um, uh, purchase, uh, Ghidorah's severed head that yeah. was ripped off by Godzilla. Which I mean kind of feels like it was ripped off from pacific rim yeah like ron perlman's character was selling like the kaiju parts yeah i mean i to be fair maybe there's a kaiju salesman in a godzilla movie i haven't seen but yeah i, I was just very familiar to have a kaiju parts salesman mm-hmm. but that that would happen mm-hmm. yeah totally so yeah i loved godzilla king of the monsters yeah it was fucking great it was exactly what i expected it to be and wanted it to be it was big monsters punching each other slapping the shit out of each other godzilla looked great i thought that they like they took the 2014 design which already kind of bulked them up more and they added like the classic spine to them from like 54 yeah like the larger spine plates and then they had them glow blue which i don't think they did in um 2014 when he lit it like when he used it as atomic breath no they I would don't like think so. it was like a charge bar It'd like start from his tail and up to his head and then his breath would go off yeah it was like push it over the top but just enough to like that fun territory i thought it was like super fun i thought the whole thing was fun yeah i saw a lot of people saying it took itself too seriously and i was like what part yeah like what part i thought that it was it was like just right i saw a lot of people who had criticized it for it being too dark and like some parts were dark it certainly wasn't say like battle of winterfell dark yeah it, it could have used a daytime fight scene it could have. i give it that like kong skull island i think did because it's part of this monster verse obviously probably like the best balance for stuff like that Mm-hmm. You had really bright fights where you could see absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Some of that worked for Kong Skull Island and some of it did Oh, not, no, though. totally. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I really liked it. I thought that it, it paid off with a lot of the monsters. Like, you get to see, like, a lot of, yeah. There was, yeah. There was everything that I really wanted in it. Big yeah, a lot, a lot of monsters, mm-hmm. like, not just, like, teasing them and being, like, Oh, there's monsters, but you're not going to get to see it. Like, you get to see it. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. No, I I definitely... I I liked it. So what do you give it out of six? Uh, I give it a... Six. Yeah, I'm going to give six, it a... Yeah, yeah I'm going to give it a six, too. Like, it, I was entertained the entire time. I was, like, super psyched on everything. I thought that it looked really good. I thought that the acting choices were, like, pretty good. Yeah. It was exactly what I expected. Like, it's a summer, early summer blockbuster giant monster movie. Which is like, we talked about this last year when we saw The Meg, right? Exactly. Where it's just like, people are, get pissed off when like monster movies, like, aren't these like Oscar worthy dramas? Like, it's okay to watch like just a stupid monster movie. Yeah. Well, it's like, what gets me is people always complain about the whole like elevated horror trend and how it's dumb. But then the same people, shit. On movies like this and uh, like the Meg. You're like, this is not elevated, but you're complaining that it's not smart enough. 
like but we talked about this when we were talking about um like the new terminator that's coming out where people are complaining that it's like too beat for beat and it's the same people who were jerking off the new halloween which is beat for beat yeah the original yeah like i mean if you really want to see how legitimately beat for beat halloween and halloween 2018 is go watch the honest trailer for it yeah they do like side by side comparisons. Obviously, it's like funny, and they're taking the piss out of it. And like the screen junkies guys, legit like movies. They're not, you know, epic huge assholes. Mm-hmm. But it is like it's a beat for beat thing. And yeah. the new Terminator looks fucking tight. Yeah. So people like you're asking too much for movies. Like a, a dumb, let a dumb movie be a dumb movie. Yeah. Like not everything has to be hereditary or Midsummer or yeah. You know. So there's you have like your like thinking man's horror, and then you have like. Let's just fucking rip shit up and yeah. see what happens, which is also fine. It's called trash cinema. Yeah. Like when you're watching. Summer's like, perfect for that. When you're watching like old fucked up monster movies that are like in black and white and terrible on like TNT or like old channels. Like, what do you want from mm-hmm. them? Like if you're watching like some mystery science theater, like what do you want? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, like the land of the mole people. Like, it's stupid. Yeah. I don't know. So we have a confirmed uh, graveyard smash on Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh, yeah. Which I'm, like, excited. Because this is, like, one of the first times that I've actually, like, gone to the movie. I had, like, no expectations. Because I was like, this could be fucking unwatchable garbage. Yeah. And it actually, like, I left, like, excited. Oh, yeah. No, totally. I know when you were like, what did you think? And then I was just like, I thought it was great. Don't tell me you hated it because I don't feel like a nerd. I almost cried about Godzilla being sad. Buh. Sad Godzilla. Mm. Oh, Sadzilla. Mm. Oh, no. That's my emo name. Yeah. <laughs> OG. yeah. Godzilla is like the OG sad boy. And he was thick with like six C's. He had fucking thunder thighs for the thunder lizard. Oh, yeah. Like, those things were like, you know what they should have had fucking jiggle? Fuck Wonder Woman's thighs jiggling. I want to see Godzilla's thighs jiggling. I want to see the cellulite on Godzilla's butt. Mm-hmm. Let me see that, like, scale you see that booty clap. Oh, fuck. His booty would clap, which leads me to another thing. How much shit's coming out of there? Oh, that's a lot. It's like a cloaca situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like shit and piss and cum and all that good stuff. But, um, ugh. Someone on Reddit did the math for how much cum godzilla would be secreting and so they measured it up against like human beings uh give off about eight grams of semen average per load versus the average weight of an average male and like they did the fucking whatever witchcraft calculus you have to do to you know scale that up to godzilla and so the math ended up being like seventy five thousand tons of a small village of sperm so he's just like fucking blasting rope um all over tokyo oh yeah just just blasting everywhere oh yeah taking down buildings yeah (laughs) gross um rigby's theory was that godzilla um is a gentleman and he only blasts rope into the sea and that's where sea foam comes from gross yeah cursed information so think about that the next time you want to go for a dip at the beach Mm, yum Anyways, so I think we're going to leave you with our two kaiju movies for this week. Uh, we got another episode coming up for you where we'll be talking about some kung fu and some science fiction. But yeah, we're going to head over to the, the news bag. Breaking news at the sour. Okay. What do you got? Um, in a surprising move, a known lover of cops is now a cop. So the uh, ex five finger oh, five finger death punch drummer is now a cop, which uh, Jeremy Spencer Ugh. is now a police officer in Southern Indiana. Um, he was He's sworn, like a reserve police officer. Uh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, so this is in Boonville, uh, Indiana. Um, which he left when he was nineteen. Now he's back, and he's going to go and bust you for smoking weed. And then he's going to take the weed and smoke it. Um, Yeah, so I guess, yeah. He hasn't retired from being a shitty drummer. He will still shittily drum and also be a shitty cop. Mm-hmm. 
So lucky uh, Southern Indiana, you could get pulled over by some asshole with a faux hawk. Just like that Sylvester Stallone thing from that Tom Segura bit where he's like, hey, roll it down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, right? Like, What would you see? Like, Because he's got like the bleach streak in his faux hawk and like a nose ring and shit. And like, um, if you really want a fucking fun experience, listen to the Toilet of Hell radio podcast. I think it's episode 161 where they read aloud from his memoirs. Which, oh like, my God, that's a good episode. Yeah, which Joe bought at like a secondhand bookstore for $2. And like they're the read overpaid. aloud from... Yeah, yeah. It is a cursed episode. Like that is something... It's extremely cursed. Um, and so the guy admits to like beating women and like smoking meth and just being like a fucking piece of shit human being. And just like his whole life is just like this, like debaucherous, like shit heap of like domestic abuse and like trauma and addiction. And just, it's It's ugly. Like, and he is like, and it's not just like that he's addicted to drugs. He was like huffing gas when he was like 13 and like in and out of fucking like dealing with, like, shady people who'd been in prison and, like, doing meth and, like, beating the shit out of his girlfriend. So, I mean, the whole beating your spouse thing ties in quite nicely with being a cop. Oh, yeah. That's where he... they It's probably on the exam, and they're like, you didn't score well on the, like, the written part, but I heard you like to beat women, so we're going to give you a trial run. Yeah. That's... uh, Big yikes. Just a fucking... Just going to pop a big ol' yikes on that. Um... Yeah. Cursed. Cursed. Yeah. None of you are free of sin. All right. So I got some news for you. Um, you ever been on a plane and you're looking for a bathroom or a place to vomit because you're hungover because you drank too much alcohol in Mexico? Sure. So a lady accidentally opened the plane emergency exit door while looking for a bathroom. Okay, wait. That shit's not secured? Right? I mean, I guess that it's an emergency exit, so you need to get out in an emergency, but like... I feel like it would be harder than just a door. Was she still drunk? I don't know. How do you? They, mis- they weren't in the air, so let's just. Oh, get that. okay, okay. I, that changes the story. Yeah, so they weren't in the air. the The clickbait headline from Global News, which fuck you, Global News. Um, so, passenger aboard a Pakistan International Airlines flight accidentally opened the emergency exit door on Friday night while hunting for the bathroom, causing a seven hour delay. Because when she opened the emergency I hope exit, people beat on her, right? When she opened the emergency exit, the slide deployed. <sighs> Could you imagine? I think that's a worse horror than someone opening it up mid-flight. Yeah, I hope every like, like lady on the plane... at an airport. Yeah. I hope every lady on the plane got to take a fucking turn. They just lined up and just, like, smacked her. Yeah, so they were sitting on the runway waiting to embark, and this lady, like, shot up from her seat and went looking for the shitter. So it sounded like she had, oh, like... Oh, like a shit panic. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. I didn't think about the shit panic. That's a that's an emotion. That's yeah, a she mood, needed to so. piss out her. Ass. Yeah. So she opened the fucking emergency door. Um. Yeah. They all of the passengers and their luggage had to be taken off Ugh. the plane, and they had to like. Yeah, thirty eight people were pushed to another plane. Uh, even later flights. Um. Yeah, and the plane's evacuation capacity was gone because, like, once the slide is... is oh, yeah, like, you fucked. Yeah, you, you can't use it, and it's, like, this big fucking thing. Like, um, they were given food, and some people got, like, an overnight hotel stay. Oh, wow um, There was other departures that were, like, fucked up, and, yeah. Um, uh, in January of this year, though, at a Ryanair flight, um, a man got fed up of waiting for the plane to take off on the runway, and he just opened the emergency exit and just jumped out onto the wing what what what's the plan after that yeah um and in september 2018 a man on a go air flight mistook the emergency exit door for the bathroom door and nearly opened it mid-flight so would everyone just get sucked out i don't know (laughs) i guess probably it'd be like that scene in dark knight rises this is why people are afraid of flying yeah because you, you can't can, you can control your own behavior, and I want to say that and most can, people are, like, rational, somewhat reasonable people that aren't going to fucking open an emergency exit door. Because, correct me if I'm fucking wrong, there's a huge sign on them that says emergency exit. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure, like, the handle's red and shit. Yeah. And it doesn't open, like, a dink, 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 like, little knobby knob. It's, like, a fucking... It's a bar or something. It's not a regular door. That's an intentional move. 
Yeah. I I fucking don't know. That's horrifying. See? Like, you can't trust people. uh, Yeah. That's like, I fucking hate flying. (laughs) It's not... I mean, of course, like, you hear only about, like, the bad stuff that happens on airplanes. You don't hear about all the... You don't get a news story about all the flights that were, like, fine. Yeah. Were on time and didn't, like, you know, fucking narrowly miss the runway or anything like that. So... You get confirmation bias with shit like that. So what else you got? Uh, I got some Dune news. Awesome. Which is interesting. Uh, so they've we all know that, you know, we're getting Dune in 2020. Uh, and we're also getting a series, I'm assuming also in 2020, um, based on the Bene Gesserit Ugh. called Dune the Sisterhood. So the Bene Gesserit, for people who aren't nerdy enough to have read Dune, are a sisterhood of witches who practice essentially genetic engineering and, like, through their super sexual abilities by selectively breeding with noblemen to produce the Quisitz Haderach, mm-hmm. which is Paul Atreides, blah, 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 blah. And eventually you get a worm man. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um... So yeah, it's, uh, I'm interested because I think the Bene Gesserit is super, like a super fascinating, like group of characters and like people. Um, I'm curious when it'll take place, whether this is, I mean, I would assume that it's a prequel because everything that comes after Dune is definitely not going to fit. In the show, because it gets fucking weird. Um, I'm a little hesitant, only because one of the writers, uh, John Spatz, Spates, um, he wrote The Mummy, a.k.a. The, the Cummy, <laughs> which is super concerning. The Ummy. Um, yeah, and it's also, they're doing that thing that like DC's done. Um, with their streaming service where they've launched a streaming service and then locked all these exclusive programs that people want to watch to their streaming service. So Warner Media will be launching a streaming service <sighs> with this program on it, which is super frustrating because like I get it. You're you're not gonna put it on NBC because they'll just fucking cancel it. <laughs> or sci fi, we've gone that route with Dune. They fucked it up. They gave them weird hats. It wasn't good. Um but, like, I hate that we're we're back where we were 15 years ago. Yeah. 10 years ago when we all were like, yo, cable sucks. I don't want to buy all these cable packages. And now we're stuck buying streaming services. It's the same fucking scam. Like, and I guess you can do that thing where you skip around and, like, pay for a month and watch it and then cancel mm-hmm. and do that thing, which that works. That's fine. But it's just, it's very frustrating because a lot of this stuff isn't going to get released physically. So then once it's gone, it's gone. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. It's just like that Constantine show. They never did a physical release of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, or Swamp Thing. <clears throat> or Swamp Thing. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see what they do. I'm really interested to see what they do with their appearance because I, I really doubt that they're going to go like the David Lynch route and shave these women's heads. Because it's, yeah. it's not really covered. Like, I in my mind anyway, the Bene Gesserit looked more like Lady Jessica, where she had hair. And, you know, like from the, the David Lynch movie. And not the bald thing. Like, the Reverend Mother has like the metal teeth, like fucking jaws in Moonraker. And that's fine. Um... But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to have a bunch of bald ladies running around fucking people. But I'm down for it if they do. They're, like, terrifying in um the movie. Yeah, like, I've always imagined them to have, like, a terrifying presence, but not necessarily be physically terrifying because they're also supposed to be, like, seductresses and mass, like, that whole side of things, right? But we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, I really hope that they don't get Brian Herbert to do his thing and, like, borrow from a lot of his stuff because 
Yikes. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, that's sad. He, controversial opinion. He's got some interesting ideas. It's his execution and the, like, space opera shit writing that Kevin J. Anderson gave it that really, like, don't fit the tone of Dune. So, I mean, take some of his ideas and make it serious and make it, like, heavy science fiction. But we'll see. It's weird, though, as well, that they're really leaning into this before the movie's even out. But here we are. Yeah. So what else you got? Um, I have a couple more. So we're going to get into a kaiju-related one. So there's a uh, guy in the Okanagan. This is like local news. Guy in is Penticton. it Olga Bogo? No, that's yeah. a cryptid. No, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's like ki- local Pogo is kind of a cryptid yeah. kaiju. So uh Okanagan man believes he's captured definitive proof of uh, the... Ogopogo. You're tearing at my heartstrings with this. You need to see the video. So we're going to pop a little. You got to check this out. Well, let's just add for this kid fucking fucks off, but I'll just talk over over this. Um, so the guy who captured this video, his name's like Jim LaRoque. Yeah. He owns the Fairview Liquor Store, which the last time oh. we were in Penticton, we got our alcohol there. Oh, shit. Okay. I like so this So I guy. guess people have been like uh, showing up at his booze store. Yeah. And, like, being like, can I see the cell phone video? And so he captured while he was out on, like, the Oh, lake. wow. What the fuck is that? Right? What is... That's not a log. That shit's, like, moving like a snake. Yeah. Holy so fuck. So it's a Global News article. If, you if uh, like, you're Canadian or if you're not, check out Global News or just Google Ogopogo. Because that's, like, for our U.S. listeners, it's, like, the british columbia version of like nessie basically yeah. so yeah this is like less than two hours from us yeah it's an extremely cursed video that's fucked up yeah so huh. i guess people have been like going and checking it out and so people are also are super excited that this video has been um uh like circulating. submitted and circulating and they're like it's the most definitive proof of the ogopogo in years and people like don't know well i mean usually it, it looks be. like a garbage bag but this looks like something like, most of the time, that footage is, like, that's a garbage bag and a stick. But that's, like, that's moving like a snake. That's creepy. It's also very large looking. Huh. Yeah, it's very, it's a creepy, it's, like, got like a very uh, serpentine uh, movement. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's I very weird. dedicate my twilight years to cryptid hunting. Yeah. So I hope you're ready for that. Oh, fuck. You're gonna spend fuck it me in and my goat ass. Fucking camper in the yeah. woods Fuck, we can go squatching i mean i go squatching that's just uh, camping so whatever your dad just got you a barbecue for your birthday so we can take that we can grill some fucking grill some franks i'll open up a can of beans because i'm obsessed with beans yeah, i know you are i love beans you just fucking put beans with everything it's uh, a crime that's what i had with my toast today i had beans on toast with a little bit of cheese right okay i it, live with a hobbit neat yeah it was very cursed second breakfast yeah. um and yeah, so we're we're gonna go squatching and just keep listening. We're gonna go squatching. But yeah, so I, I just actually saw that video get shared on my Facebook and I was like, Well, since we're talking about fucking monsters, mm-hmm. let's talk about uh the Ogo Pogo. So you got anything else? That's what the eye Okay, that's all so I got. my last piece of news, this is like a fun piece of news because it's like a it's like an update, actually. I don't know if you have the fucking update. There you go, that's the one. So we had talked about it before on the podcast. I think it was maybe even like when we started the podcast and started doing uh, like news articles. So remember how this like beach in like France kept finding like Garfield phones? Yes. Okay. So they have solved the mystery of them. Okay. Where they're coming from. Where are they coming from? So it had been theorized that like... It's not from Canada. It's not like a... A it's thing not, of garbage that like we dumped somewhere again? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not our garbage. Okay. But it kind of is. Oh, I knew it. So they had been theorized that, like, so, at some point a shipping container had fallen off of a ship. Okay, yeah. Um, And gotten stuck somewhere and that the crap that was inside the shipping container was washing out. Yeah. But they had never been able to locate the shipping container. So... They found the shipping container wedged in a cave that's only accessible at low tide. It's so steep. It's this incredible, like, fissure in the earth. It's over 30 meters deep. The kaiju lives in there. Yes. So that's Godzilla sleeps on a bag of fucking Garfield phones. Yeah. Cursed. 
course. Um, so under the boulders at the front entrance of this cave, they found 23 complete Garfield's phones. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and they're, they're just like everywhere. So, um, where's the cave? It's, it it's say? in, uh, in, where is it? Fucking, what is it called? And it's in French. It's like it, near the Eroese Marine Nature Park oh, okay. in Finister, France. And yeah, they don't know how many containers fell into the water. If it's just this one that's in the bottom of this cave or if it was a ship that wrecked or what happened, they don't. So there's that mystery still remains, but they have found the likely source where this junk is coming from. Yeah. Because they've been finding like pieces of Garfield phones for like years. Yeah. Huh. So Godzilla is living in there on his bed of like, that would make you the worst dragon. Yeah. That's a pretty shitty dragon. Like if you're like, Ooh, I'm living like all nice on my hoard of <laughs> on my phones. Hoard of phones, yeah, terrible. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, could have a better hoard. Mm-hmm. We I mean, yeah. could have like an ancient Atlantis Hollow Earth hoard. That's Fuck. better. So that's all I have for news this week. Um, our like our personal news, like I said at the start of the episode, top of the episode, we're going to the Calgary Horror Convention next week. So we're going to be checking out some short films, some features. We're going to be checking out some, uh, you know, you get to meet some stars. We can meet Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley. We can. Uh, oh, and you can tell him that he should only play creepy yeah. as a father. Yeah, you're disconcerting when you're not freaking me out. <laughs> To the point that you do freak me out. And yeah, we're just going to be checking that out. So I think that'll be super cool. Um, yeah, so we've got another episode to record for you this week. So hopefully we can get that out because we are a little bit behind. We're always like a daily and a dollar short. I have no yeah. idea. I don't know. Hippies. <clears throat> From BC. It's yeah. not my fault. Yeah, we're not great. There's lots of cannabis in the air here. So we're going to leave you guys on that for this week. We're going to leave you on Godzilla sleeping on a fucking bed of his own sperm and garfield phones gross mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's just blasting rope thinking about garfield okay she hates mondays so we're gonna leave you on that loves if- lasagna though <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Odie. if you haven't uh already and you'd like to for whatever reason you can check us out at drunkenagraveyard.com if you like this podcast like our website our videos or anything else that we make, you can send us a buck or two over on our Patreon. So that's patreon.com forward slash drunk in a graveyard. We're still working on hitting our first goal of 50 bucks a month. So we're at 43. So chuck us a, chuck us a dollar or two over there. That'd be super rad. And yeah, if you are into videos, you can check out our YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash drunk in a graveyard. We haven't uploaded a video in a little bit, but we're going to get back. Um, once we're back from Calgary horror con to some streaming, I've got some YouTube videos kind of planned for you guys so it'll be kind of like a cool little little adventure i think um yeah and you can follow us on our social media on twitter we are drunk graveyard and on instagram and facebook we are drunk in a graveyard if you have anything you would like us to check out on the site send us an email that's drunk in a graveyard at gmail.com and until next time kaiju forever and always stay spooky Bye bye <laughs>